Hi. Hi, Brenda. How are you? Thanks for coming and supporting us. I greatly appreciate it. We ended up starting a little bit later today because Jason had to work. Um, he works in the hospital. He's a respiratory therapist. So he just got home. Um, and we're, so now we're starting the show. But hopefully next week we will start at 6.30. Hello. Welcome. Is it Love Dewana? Is that how you say your name? Okay, so um, we're just going to go ahead and get started and hopefully everybody uh, comes in. Welcome, uh, Love Dewana. We, every week we do this show and we do storage lockers and we also um, do trivia. So you're more than welcome to stay and um, enjoy the show and be involved in the trivia. Um, but just for coming in, you get a ticket with your name on it, and we're going to do a drawing at the end of the night, and that way you can um, possibly win a prize, and we'll ship it directly to you. Okay, so it looks like we have three people in right now, and hopefully more people will come in as we go along. Um, so just a few updates as far as our channel, the storage locker. We didn't get out this week to buy another storage locker, just thing that's going on right now. Um, we're kind of hunkering down and trying to avoid going out into public as much as possible. With the exception of Jason, who works as a respiratory therapist in the hospital. So he's been working multiple shifts there right now to, to help out the hospital. And, but we will be having a new episode of the Elvis Locker come up probably here in the next couple of days. So make sure you keep your eye out for that one. Okay, so from this point on, I guess I'll show you guys what the prizes are this week as far as the contest goes. Um, let's see here. If anybody else comes in, they'll have to just guess what it is. Okay, so we have Battle Los Angeles. These are new DVDs, guys. New, brand new. Brenda, you probably remember these from last week. Uh, Chicken Run. The Devil Wears Prada. One of my favorites. Bounty Hunter. And Hot Shots. All right, and then I, I pulled it. I brought out um, the same button I had last week that didn't get picked. It's a little doggy with wings and a halo, which is really cute. And then we also have this. I don't know. I think it's an ornament for a Christmas tree. If you like Mario Brothers, what's his name? Is it Luigi? It's Mario. It's Mario. Mario, sorry. <laughs> but it says uh, 2018 Nintendo on the back of it. So it's kind of a collectible thing here. And then we have one other really cool thing. Um, this is actually, oh goodness, can you get any closer on that, Tim, at all? Let's see. So this is a pin bag. This is a 2007 Bangkok. What this is, this is actually a pin uh, that was given out to players at the World Transplant Games in Bangkok in 2007. So this is a really nice, interesting piece. This, you actually, they're, they're rare and hard to get, but a lot of uh, pin collectors I mean, I'm assuming they're involved with the Olympic Games and the World Transplant Games. Um, probably collect these. All right. So let's see if anybody else joined here. Let's see. I'm 
You like that movie? Hi, Flippin' Particles. How are you? Thank you for coming in tonight. Where's my thing? I'm going to put your name just for coming in. You get a ticket. That's Princess being naughty over there. Give me my finger. Ow! <laughs> Ow! She likes to play. She really enjoys she likes to play. <laughs> um, okay, so she is really, really being rough tonight. Well, I'm kind of, I was waiting for Granny Becky to come in because um, I was going to show her. She gave a hat challenge. We'll wait, Tim, and see, I'll see if she comes in. And um, I wanted to show her the hat that we actually had made. So... We'll see if she comes out. <laughs> oh, thank you, love Duana. Lisa, get this dog off me. She, geez, you're being ridiculous. She, she loves to play with Jason all the time. She is quite the character. <laughs> um, so if Brenda, do you know Flippin' Particles? Yes, you guys know each other. And then love, Dewana. Um, I think I met you in another chat room. I can't remember which chat room or which channel we were on. Um, but you guys, please make sure you connect. Hi, Marie. Welcome. Is Justin going to join you tonight? I'm going to put your name in the pot here. And flipping particles, forgive me. Is it D? Is that your name? I just want to make sure. Hi, Justin. Welcome. We're putting the putting your name just for coming in into the pot here. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm glad I said it right. <laughs> I'm surprised Harry Homestone isn't here yet. <laughs> Maybe he's going to skip a show this week. I don't know. So, and I think, Marie, you know Flippin' Particles, right? Ow! Oh, hi, Thrift Beast. How are you? We're just kind of waiting for... Um, Everybody to come in for the next couple minutes, and then we'll get started on trivia. So, Thrift Beast, are you Chris? Is that your name? Is it Chris? Love to want to. Oh, Vern's Vernas Junk Closet. That's right. That's right. I remember. Boatman, hi. Welcome. How are you this evening? I'm putting your name in just for coming into the chat. Your name gets put into a, into the final drawing for the evening. So um, for each question that we ask, whoever gets the correct answer, your name gets put into the drawing that we're going to do at the end of the night. Okay. So, um... It looks like everybody kind of knows each other, except for you guys don't know. Um, love to want to you guys connect with each other. And if anybody's looking for like a playlist buddies, um, we can definitely talk about that. If anybody's needing hours for your channel. Okay, so um, I guess for right now, unless um, <coughs> we'll see if Dumpster Diving Granny Becky comes in. And if she comes in, then I'll show her the hat that I made. All right, well, let's do this. Um, I'm going to show the prizes again because some of the people came in late. Um, and then then that way you guys know what you guys are playing for this evening. All right, let's see here. 
All right, so some of you that were here last week, um, I have a few of the same items, but I added a couple more. So we have Hot Shots DVD. These are brand new DVDs, guys. So you get to pick, <coughs> if you win, you get to pick one of these items and I'll ship, ship it to you directly. And then we have Bounty Hunter. The Devil Wears Prada. Chicken Run. Battle Los Angeles. Okay, and then this we had last week. This was, it's a little dog with a halo in wings. And then we have... I, I think it's a an ornament, perhaps. Um, it's Mario, and on the back of it, it says trademark uh, 2018 Nintendo. And then I have one other cool thing. Uh, this is a really interesting pin. This is 2007. Uh, it's from Bangkok, the World Transplant Games. It's basically just like the Olympics, but people that um, were either had transplants or involved with transplants compete, um, just like the Olympics. Um, but this is this is kind of a rare pin. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to find uh, them on eBay unless it's one of my listings because I have a, quite a few of them. For one extra entry into the contest tonight, first person who can tell me what country Bangkok is in. Go. Let's see. I'm watching. I'm watching. Hi, Pinoy. Welcome. She said, love to want us at Thailand. That's right. Congratulations, Love Javani. You get an extra ticket tonight. Let's see. All right. Hi, Pinoy. I put, I put a name or a little ticket in for you. We're doing trivia. Okay. So let's do this. Why don't we have um, Tim come over and we'll pull out one of the items that you guys get to guess. Now, again, please remember he looks for specific answers. So come here, princess. Oh, hey everyone. This is Tim, my brother, for those of you that are new. Uh, okay, so let's see. I what can do, hold on. Marie, that's oh. a great question. I, I did smaller items so I could try doing international shipping if it's, if it's um, not too heavy. <laughs> then I don't mind sticking a bunch of stamps on an envelope and sending it. It's not a big deal. So um, I think for, I think I can just do regular stamps. That's why I picked smaller items. So um, for now, yeah, we'll we'll do international. And then if it ends up being too much to you know for me to ship, <laughs> I might not do international anymore. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it out. Okay, go ahead. So oh, all right. So let's see here. I've got a large box of these. Um, oh, they're quite heavy. It's probably about a hundred or so of these in here. Uh, they're round, they're shiny, and they're, they're metal. So uh, you guys get trying yeah, to guess what it guess is. Guess what they are. They're probably, oh gosh, I should know the exact That's size. That's a good... That's a good guess, Justin. Justin said bearings. Bear mm, they look like bearings, but they're not. 
these are specifically made for a specific purpose. They're not ball bearings. No. Hey, Brandon, welcome. They're uh, they're actually um, actually for a game. Oh, yeah, somebody got it. Who got it? Pinballs. Yeah. Danny May? Yeah, they're pinballs. Congratulations, Danny May. Yeah. You, you won. Probably the easiest one we've done here. Yeah, these uh, these are used. Flip and uh, Particles said Benoit balls. Oh, that's what I said they were. No, I told not. you. <laughs> you have to replace them every so often or they'll rip up the play field so these are just old ones boy that was too easy well those crazy. um so how do I, how do I real quick thing? real quick oh is there a way yeah there's a lever. hang on guys hold on there's a lever kind of danny i'm putting an extra just, ticket oh, sorry, in guys. it's okay i'm putting an extra this ticket in for you back like that to tighten it nice yeah yeah, so um, for pinball machines, hang on, let's talk oh. about the pinball machines. So, yeah. Tim, um, actually, why don't you tell them about a few of your pinball machines? Oh, uh, I I repair pinball machines. I um, I collect them. I operate them. Um, gosh, I've been working on them since the mid '80s. Uh, so. It's uh, something that's uh, it's an active. Uh, I say, hate to say gaming experience, but uh, uh, pinballs really come back uh, in popularity over the last uh, four or five years in uh, collecting and uh, uh, people that want to restore them, they want to you know, to buy them and uh, and collect them. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, Thanks. Yeah, that's pinballs. Pinballs are pinballs. What are you doing, Jason? <laughs> is it yeah, not in focus? Yeah, that's not going to be in focus. I don't know what oh that was. Oh, my gosh. So, all right. So, the next little thing. <coughs> if you can guess what this is, this is actually a, a historic piece. It goes back, uh, oh gosh, this one's probably about 40 years old. Um, it's got some wiring, so obviously it connects into something. Um, this little ball here rolls and moves. And it's got some, uh, like an encoder wheel and some optics. Flip it, or D says, computer mouse ball oh yeah you know the computer mouse balls were based on this so a computer mouse ball it, it kind of goes like this this little roller here goes on the bottom only this is okay, much wait, bigger but this was invented first Danny oh. May says it looks like my white ball when I play pool okay let's see I think wait. Justin's pretty close wait hold on um, oh, the yeah, the larger ones use, cl it's close to a cue ball size, but it's a little bit smaller. Love uh, Duana says video game control. It is a video game control. You're, you're, that's that's it's, part of the answer. It's not a Pac-Man control. Uh, ball controller for arcade. Yeah, that's probably the closest. And then Brenda says a part for a pinball machine. No, not that. Yeah, so, so far, Justin's the closest. Um, Love Duana says Atari. It, it is Atari. Yes. You guys it, are getting it, warm. It was out of an Atari machine. Warm. Now, I guess it, Centipede. Oh, That's Justin! it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a Centipede controller. Yep. Atari Justin's centipede. a good guesser. Yeah, that was, that was perfect. Yeah. Good job, I'll Justin. Something harder next, next week. So, um, Justin, did you play uh, Centipede at all? Did you like playing Centipede? Yeah. yeah, Brenda, yeah it's okay, Brenda. Too. It's okay. You'll get one. You got one last week. 
it's gonna get a little bit harder from here. So, like, I gotta warn oh, you. <laughs> that was the easy stuff. All right, so let uh, me put this in. Hold on. Con congrats. Actually, I, I might have a one easy one. Justin. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, these. Um, if you ever are dumpster diving or going through storage units, you find something like this that is very sellable on eBay. Uh, used controllers like this. I knew they're probably about 60, 70 bucks used. You could probably sell it for uh, 25 to 35. Uh, so it's, there's some value there. Um, all right. This here, it's a black case. That doesn't help you much, so we'll have to open this up here. Hi, Elton. Welcome. We're playing trivia. Out of the case. Actually, I should cover that up, shouldn't I? <laughs> Brenda says dog toy. Dog toy. No, it's because yeah. Jason keeps showing the. Yeah. So uh, there's some connections in the back and uh, hi Debbie shut bricks welcome I could probably actually turn it on we're here. playing trivia yeah it's a little uh, LCD screen does it actually say what it is hold on Let's yeah see. I don't know I might I might keep love the one it says typewriter uh, it's got typewriter keys. It's a QWERTY keyboard. Okay, and then Word Justin says Commodore 64. Oh, that's close. Wrong company. Um, uh, Marie says Timex computer. It, it's a computer, uh, but it's not Timex. It's an old computer. Yeah. Um, D says word processor. It has a word processor in it. It also has the basic language, so you can do graphic programs. Um, uh, Debbie Shep Brooks says a thingy. A thingy. Wow. Okay. And then Brenda says a thing that UPS used when they went door to door. It's actually early Microsoft software. Love Duana says IBM. Not IBM. No. Yeah, this, I mean, this does go way school. back. Yeah, super old school. Should I give them the year it's from? Um, yeah, give them the year. Thanks, that, Brenda. It's 19, for catching that. 1983. 1983. Love Duana says old computer. It is an old computer. It is. I love Duana, but he's looking for a little bit more specific. Yeah. Actually, Answer. yeah, if I, if I show this, that'll, I mean, that'll, yeah, that says exactly what it is. <laughs> Deputy Shep uh, says, oh, this is uh, hard. It looks cool, though. On the back, it's got a printer port. It's got a modem port, so you could hook it up to your telephone and get on the Internet. Elton says something like a laptop. It, yeah, yeah, that's very good. It's very good. It's one of the first laptop computers. Um, this one had uh, all. Um, Brenda says short key for court. No, no. It does look like one of those short key machines yeah. that they use in court. Mm -hmm. Can you give them another hint? Um, actually, I used to use one of these in my job. In the 80s, it's what I used to report uh, uh, income for the company I worked for at the time. Um, D says Radio Shack computer. Yes. So she won. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could you could get a little more. Well, we'll give you a ticket, D. Yeah. You're like. Yeah, it'd be hard to get closer than that. Why don't you, why don't you zoom in on it, Jason? D D says a TRS-80. It is a TRS-80, yeah. Is that the answer you were looking for? Yeah, uh, that's it right there. So D got it then? Uh, Are you still looking? Am I focused? 
Pro yeah, yeah, I'd say she got it. Really? It's a TRS-80 Model 100 computer. This is one of the first earliest laptops. Uh, you could load programs onto it. You could uh, get on the internet of the day uh, or bulletin board services. And um, a pretty, pretty powerful computer in its day. So. If somebody was to find that in like Goodwill or uh, a locker or a, a dumpster or a garage sale, a hundred bucks. Wow. Yeah, a hundred bucks or more, depending on the shape. Um, these are very co collectible. There's a lot of TRS-80 uh, Radio Shack computer groups still out there. Uh, people love to write programs for them and on them and even collect the vintage software. The vintage software can be worth quite a bit that goes with them. Uh, and it's something that's, you know, uh, a lot of people threw them away, threw them in the dumpster. Uh, so, but yeah. I mean, almost 40 years old and this one works good as new. They almost think about all the stuff from like the 80s and 70s and people when every everybody was upgrading to new computers and new mm -hmm. video they threw the stuff away yeah yeah so <laughs> sorry there's a visitor that keeps coming into the camera I'm sorry. what is that chase <laughs> oh god okay so Congratulations, D. Great yeah, job. That's actually pretty good. Great job. That's, Great yeah, job. Pretty obscure item there. <laughs> um, this is extremely obscure. Okay, um, this one. This one might be tough. This box. It's it's black. It's it's Bakelite. Uh, it's old material from a long time ago, and inside. We have a little contraption. Actually, I need to get my glasses on here. Um, Can you give them any hints? Any hints? Uh, this is World War Two. Okay, World War Two, uh, guys. You can zoom in here. Deputy Shep says, oh wait, Justin says a gyroscope. No. Good guess, Justin. And then Deputy Shep says, looks like a compass. That's actually part of the title. It's part of the title. Yeah, that's the, there's two words. Um, and. Deputy Shep says microscope. No. Deputy Shep says plain compass. No. But it, it, it is a type of compass. Brenda says a road measurements gadget. You know, it looks like one. It, it kind of looks like a, 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 tra a, you're thinking a transit. Uh, it's, you know, you would have it on a base. You have leveler wheels here, and you have the leveling bubbles here. Because to to do what you need to do with this, it has to be on a level surface. And then you've got a wheel here that gives you, it's in 360 degrees. And then another wheel here, this turns. It'll turn it uh, on a declination then this gives you, there's a sighting, uh, there's sites here um, that, you, that you look through. D says a navigation compass. It, it is for navigation. And it is a blank compass. Um, Justin says a horizon compass. You could sight the horizon with this. But you could cite a lot of other things that, than just the horizon. Actually, it says right there what, that, what the title is on that data plate. Oh, oh, you guys are oh, getting close. Yeah, 
yeah. Uh, you have to Justin, think. Justin, uh, you're close. You have to think outer space. Brenda says, "Art, art, architect, measurements, compass, architect. Sorry, architect, measurement, compass." Justin mm. says an octon compass. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the last week. Yeah. The, the, uh, the octant. The, yeah. The octant. The. So you're. So the, this was used in an airplane. It was meant to be used while you were flying, and it's a navigational aid. Debbie Sh says star constellation compass. That's actually the closest. Yeah, that's pretty that's close, the closest. Debbie. Yeah, that's pretty darn close. Uh, you would use this to sight um, D the moon or stars. D said aeronautical compass. No. Marie says landing compass. No. Um. Aircraft in the day, they actually had a, uh, a dome in the top of the aircraft. It was plexiglass, and you could look out, and you'd have this thing up in there to sight stars. So I, I'm thinking I like the star constellation. Yeah. This answer the best. Debbie, you're but, really close. Focus in on, on the data plate here, Jason, see if you can... Get a. Uh, Justin says North Star Compass. You could cite the North Star. That's the title of it right there. Can you see it? It's not. It's not focusing on it. It's hard to see. Oh no, wait, it's, okay. it's. It's just it's hard in this lighting. There we go. Yeah. So do you guys see what it says? So who would be the, who, I think. I, I like the star constellation. Compass so Debbie, yeah. Debbie. Debbie. Yeah. So it's an astro compass. Astro oh, compass. from Houston? No, it's not from Houston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. So Debbie, congratulations. You were the closest one on that one. And I think Justin was pretty close too. And so who else? Someone else said astronautical. Who said astronautical? He said aeronautical. Air, oh, yeah. aeronautical. Okay. So. Um. But yeah, that's that's an astro compass. That was uh, most uh, aircraft carried those because uh, they didn't have the computers and electronics like we have today. I don't even know what something Congrats, Debbie. You got like that one. So you got an extra ticket into the drawing. Do I have to do this? So, not that anybody would find that at Goodwill. <laughs> and if yeah. you did, uh, how it, much do you think that... <laughs> something like this um, for a collector would be worth. <laughs> typically go for... Anywhere, anywhere from fifty to a hundred bucks. Fifty to hundred. Yeah, I think it's worth more than a hundred dollars just because we love collecting plain parts. But I don't know. It's, it's not something cool. you normally come across every day. Marie says Barney. <laughs> Barney <laughs> or Barney? Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, no. Wait, it, no, it is purple. It's not a teddy bear, though. Wait. Here, turn it towards me. Let, let me see it before. <laughs> I don't think it's a... <laughs> Wait, uh, he's, he's it's, not a it's not a dog toy. It's not a dog toy. Wow. So this, it's a cat. Can you focus in on it? Let's see. Wait. Is it a cat? I can't read it. It's a T-Y-C. It's like a little... 
Was that a leopard? Some sort of a leopard. But good guess, you guys. Good guess. <laughs> All right. So we got something else here we're bringing out. Let's see here. So I don't know if any of you have ever seen anything like this before to get this in here where there's no glare. I, I have it in a protective sleeve. There's the front. And then there's the back. I well, it's hard to see. I have it upside down. I have one that's in a little better shape. That we can see. Hi, Pauline. Welcome. We're doing trivia. And if you guess the answer correctly, you get an extra drawing into tonight's giveaway. But just for coming in, you get your name put into the pot. There's a date on here. If you can zoom in a little more, Jason. Wait, okay, hold on. So there's people answering here. Let's see. Um, Justin says a stamp. No. Um, Debbie says it's a Philadelphia dollar. Yeah. It was it was printed in Philadelphia, and you can see the date there. Um, B. Hi, B. O. Um, is that Chinese along the side? No. No, it's not. It's, it's probably not. closer to Old English. Um, Justin says postcard. There's actually, there's a denomination on it. It says $7. 2021. So, B. Earl, we're doing trivia. So, basically, you try to guess what it is, and whoever gets the answer correct first, their name gets put into a drawing for a free giveaway. So, um, let's see. Yeah, there you see it. Seven dollars. There's there's an imprint of a leaf on the Debbie back. Debbie says seven Philadelphia dollars. No, no, it's actually it's in Spanish milled dollars. Is that the answer? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then Brenda says it's an old grocery stamp card in nope. China. No. <laughs> nope. um, Marie says Spanish note. Well, you know, it, it's that's an interesting angle because um, when this is made, uh, the well, when this is made, Spanish uh, eight, eight reals or a piece of piece of eight uh, was really the world currency. Spanish dollars were the world currency through the 18th and part of the 19th century. Brenda says a Visa card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's not a Visa card. Can we give them what year it's from? Well, it's right there. I can't. It says July 21st, 1776. Oh, it's from 1776. Wow, that's right after we did an a Independence Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've ruled out, it's not a Spanish no. Um, B. Earl says, a conversion to get your money from Spanish to American. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of bad, but here on the top it says, um, it says the, the United Colonies on the D very top. D says $7 bank note. No. No. Brenda says an IOU card. No. Wow. Um, you know, actually, I'll show them a newer version of the same thing. This is from a few years later. It's a different denomination, but this is... from 1779, it's a $65 note. 
But you're looking for a specific. Yeah, I mean, it's. Pauline says that is money. It is money, yeah. And it's another leaf and print on the back. They, they did that to prevent counterfeiting, but it didn't help much. Justin says gold or silver note. Uh, it's, it was redeemable in Spanish silver dollars. Um, they tried to prevent counterfeiting by doing complex designs and adding color, but the British wound up counterfeiting a lot of this money. But this came from Spain? No, it was backed by Spanish dollars. Where, where did it come from, though? Like, what? Let's see here. If we look at... I can't see that well. Enough. That was currency that was used in the United States? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On Brenda the very, says land note. On the very top of the note, let's see here. The first note said the United Colonies, and then this note here, uh, the very top says the United States. Oh, so in 1776, it said colonies. The United and in colonies. 70, 1779, it says states. Yeah. Because we had, okay. It was a few, it was three years later, you know. So what would we, what do you think this would, what other hint could we give them to lead them in the right direction? Well, um... Yeah, this might be really tough for them. Um, the government at the Brenda time... Brenda said mining note? No, no. Um, it, it was issued by... Uh, it was issued by the Congress, the Continental Congress, uh, to... Uh, as as our first currency. Okay, so it's the first paper money that was created? It, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's the first United um, States paper money. He says it's a stock certificate. No. No? No. Okay, so... <sighs> What did they, what would they call money that was first, it's not like a shilling or it, what? <laughs> there was a famous phrase at the time um, that people would use for something that was, that they would say, oh, that's worthless. They would say it's, it's not worth a continental. Oh. Continental something. That's, right, a, huge so that's, a, that's clue. a huge clue. Pauline says it's a food stamp. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, so so it's not worth a continental dime. I'm trying to remember what they would say. A continental. A continental square. Continental, a, a continental. paper. Continental. Okay, he's trying to give his hints, guys. So it's a continental something. If you ever find this in a locker, it's it's worth uh, either hanging on to or having appraised. Um, a continental paper square. Uh, Lincoln. <laughs> a continental it's not a land deed and, and it okay, is okay justin says continental currency yes exactly oh justin you got it exactly so you exactly. got it yeah that was tough yeah I, yeah I that, told was you to be tough. that was hard that was hard yeah it's it's continental currency and that this here they started issuing this stuff in 1775 before, uh, like a year before the Declaration of Independence. 
and uh, they issued it all the way up through the end of the war, 1783. Oh. Um, and it was used it was backed by spanish silver uh it was uh overprinted uh it was highly inflationary the british uh actually um uh, counterfeited a lot of it and flooded uh flooded it into the u.s markets um it was so bad uh that we did the united states didn't issue paper money again until 1861 wow. even though we still used we didn't have a silver our own silver dollar until what the 1850s but we used we used spanish coinage spanish uh uh eight real coins all right, we're going to do an easy one all right yeah, oh, oh yeah. no wait i'm gonna let jason do the next one okay. real quick I, I have one more that's so we're that's, gonna let Jason do one real quick. Show, super, show him that one. Tough. Okay, you guys get ready. Here we go. Easy. Here it comes. <laughs> Where you guys show him the whole thing? Where you guys show him the whole thing? <laughs> it's easy one. I have no idea what that is. Okay, wait. Deppy Shep said unicorn owl. Yes, it is. It's a T. Una owl. Here, put it to closer owl. to the screen, Jason, so they can see. This is, it is a unicorn owl. It's a TY unicorn owl. <laughs> All right, congratulate. We threw an easy one in there for you guys. <laughs> All right. Let's see it. Congratulations, Debbie. Okay. Hold on. Go ahead, Tim, whenever you're ready. Okay. All right. So this here is something else that's a little unique. That's cool. You Are can you see it, it's it's good? smaller. It's a lot smaller than a, a dollar bill. Can we show them like a regular size bill? I have. Let's see here. Uh, do you have? Although I don't have any cash here. All right. Sorry, it's going to be blurry there. For so, a um, Jeffy says a fifty cent bill. Yeah, here. Do you say a fifty cent bill? It's it's got another name. Brenda says a Spanish dollar. <laughs> no. It looks like there's signatures on there. There are their hands. This is this one's hand signed. Oh wow. Um. It it's actually this guy's name right here. That's his picture on the note. And he signed it? He signed it. And this note is actually the reason why in the United States we have a law saying that nobody living can be on U.S. currency. Oh, really? Yeah, he released this note. He signed it. It went into circulation. And Pissed off a lot of people in Congress. And they promptly passed the law saying that nobody living <laughs> could be on U.S. currency. Justin says fractional paper. It is fractional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. But that's not the answer you're looking for? Um, or can we give him an extra ticket for that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. it's, it, well, it's uh, actually could be a little more specific. Justin, I'm going to give you an extra ticket, but I think he, he's looking for a little bit more uh, specific yeah. answer, but I'm putting, I'm putting a ticket in there for you. Um, this was issued, uh, they started issuing this in the uh, Civil War. 
B oh, L yeah. says fifty cent Th that's, fractional currency. That's exactly it. All yeah, right, so B, exactly congratulations. It. Who signed it? Uh, F. E. Spinner. That's G General F. E. Spinner. <laughs> He was the tenth treasurer of the Brenda United says States. says Wizard of Oz money. Yeah, it does look looks, like the guy behind like the that. curtain. Yeah, <laughs> um, they issued this all the way through the Civil War. Uh, instead of coins, they had to return to paper money because they needed the metal for the war. Uh, this one was actually printed in probably eighteen sixty four. It's. Uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, but th this is the reason why nobody living can be on U.S. currency. So I, I just thought that was interesting. That is really cool. Yeah. Jason, do an easy one for me. Uh, I'm good. And you that, want to do an easy one? That's actually all I have. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have. Do you guys want an easy one? <clears throat> Hold on. I want to talk to him about something we found. Okay. Oh. But hold on. It does look like the Wizard of Oz guy, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Wait, what was the Wizard of Oz guy? What was his name? The, the actor wizard. or... Not the actor, but the the character. The wizard. The wizard. That's right, I'm stupid. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hi, everybody. This is Jason, my husband, for those of you that are new. So for those of you just joining, I just got off work. I worked a 12-hour shift in the hospital trying to help out with all this uh, I all this uh, recent stuff we got going on. Um, so uh, before I could come in the house, I was told I had to take a shower before I could come up here. So I'm in my jammies because I'm going to bed as soon as we turn you guys off. Um, I want to talk with you about old cameras. I was recently shocked to find out that some of the old cameras that we found – not so much the ones that look like antiques, but the ones that look like they're from the 80s, just kind of cheap, lots of plastic on them. Um, they're actually really, really, really valuable. Uh, this particular camera, uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's called the Canon AE-1. Um, this particular camera, the lens that's on it is made out of all glass. And I guess what's going on is... Uh, people that are photographers nowadays they have digital cameras um, they want these these lenses are super super uh, collectible and usable for them they take them and they retrofit them onto their new cameras and they're supposed to be like so much better than the uh, lenses that come with them these days um, this particular camera we found in one of our lockers and it's been sitting uh, it's been sitting in our living room forever and uh, I happen to have a garage sale last weekend and the guy asked me if I had any old cameras I went and grabbed it I, I was gonna sell it to him for five bucks he was so excited to see that it was this camera he showed me how it worked and he told me that they're worth about 150 bucks And I was like oh god I'm tired of this neighborhood uh, but sure enough I went inside and I looked it up and 150 200 dollars and it's just an old camera something you find like in the goodwill so when you're out there and you come across these do not uh, do not chuck them. Uh, they're actually very very valuable, especially if they have the lens. The lens is what's most desirable to everybody. Um, so a little recap of the garage sale that we had this weekend. I thought it was going to be a bust because of all the coronavirus stuff that's going on. Uh, we actually um, got just about five hundred dollars in sales on Saturday sale only. Uh, I guess the people that came out and wanted to go to the garage sale on that day were really serious about it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they, they, they were. Went and it wasn't like I was charging, you know, a million dollars for anything. I, I make everything a super good deal, but the people who came around, they, they wanted to buy a lot of stuff. So that's great news. Um, I hope everybody out there is staying healthy. Um, as a medical professional, I can tell you that. Uh, any threat to your health should be treated as such, whether they're making a big deal of it or not. It's always, always a good idea to wash your hands, uh, eat healthy, get plenty of rest, um, and and try to you know maintain a little bit of distance between large groups of people. Uh, I think if you follow those things, uh, especially the washing your hands, I think you're going to come out okay in this whole deal. Um, as far as all the gouging of all the uh, prices out there, I think uh, a lot of that's gone away. I think people are just now starting to realize they need to buy a bunch of stuff. So, um, you know, when you're out there, be respectful to each other. Everybody's hurting a little bit right now. Um, everybody's a little bit short on 
certain supplies. Everybody's short on a little bit of food. I think if we all work together, we can get through this thing just fine. And that's all I have to say for you this week. Uh, I hope everybody's doing great out there. If you have any questions, this is the answer and questions part of the uh, of the show. We got about five minutes. If you have any questions about storage lockers, if you have any questions about garage sales, tactics, anything like that, um, please shoot. I'll be more than happy to answer. You guys, we're gonna um, while <laughs> while he's doing that, um, we're gonna do two more things. Um, he'll answer any questions you may have. But one of the things I wanted to do is show my hat that I made for, I don't know if you guys know who <coughs> Dumpster Diving Granny Becky is. She put a challenge out there to make a crazy hat. And you had, I think, four days to do it, uh, make a little video, and show her your crazy hat. So... Um, while he's doing that, I'm going to grab my crazy hat. That way, when she goes and watches this, she'll see, she'll see the crazy hat. I am not crafty by any means. I have to tell oh you this. Oh, my God. Wait. Hold on. Oh, you want to? Okay, show him. Here. So, Tim's got the crazy hat on. This is... Am this I, is what I came up with, Granny Becky. So Am I tripping out right now? No. So it's adorned with silver coin and a big bow in the back, and the silver coin goes all the way around. And then it's adorned with Hello Kitty and little hearts and cherries. And I put little, um, what are those called again? I can't see. Oh, um, um, little seashells. Sorry, seashells. So there's my crazy hat, Granny Becky. Thank you for the challenge, and hopefully, um, I don't win. <laughs> Just kidding. Because if you if you win, you have to pick the next challenge, and I honestly, I don't know, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so. But that's my crazy ass. <laughs> so you guys, if you want to enter her contest, all you have to do is make a crazy hat. And I think you have to submit it by tomorrow or the next day. She, is, would, she was saying that you have to um, make a little video <laughs> and put it on your channel and say that you made it for the crazy hat challenge. So um, you guys still have time. So if you're bored, you want to do something tonight um, or tomorrow, just make sure you get it up. I think it's by tomorrow or the next day. Does somebody ask a question? Okay, yeah. let's see. Brenda. Brenda, do you see it? You want me no, to tell you? Okay. Me. Brenda asked, my mom is 78 with COPD. She had lung cancer. What should we do to make sure she is safe? Uh, this, question. Um, I guess the, the big thing is the environment she's in. If she's staying with you, it might be a good idea to try and seclude her to one of the rooms where she's most comfortable. Um, you always want to wash your hands before you go in to see her. You always want to wash your hands after you leave. Make sure that she's eating healthy. Try to stay away from alcohol and cigarettes if she's smoking cigarettes. Any of those things that can compromise your cough drive. Um, you don't want to be involved uh, any of that stuff around her. Um, make sure she has plenty of fluids, um, dehydration, especially dehydration of the mouth. If you guys have your heaters on at night, um, that's where the disease likes to flourish in a warm, dry tongue. Uh, it's the worst. So make sure she's got plenty of fluids, wash your hands, eat healthy, get plenty of rest. That's what you got to do. Um, try to limit yourself from going out into large groups. Again, we're, we're not seeing, you know, 5,000 cases in Arizona. We, we, I think we're at 21, but because of all these things that they're putting in place, they're trying to nail it before it turns Brenda, into a big what problem. state are you in? Where are you? Because um, I know some states have got, I know Washington got hit pretty hard. Yeah, um, your, uh, your coastal states are, are going are gonna to hit it. She's in Arkansas. It, yeah. I, I think uh, in Arkansas, just like us, we're, we're a landlocked state. Um, I, I believe we're not going to hit it, uh, get hit as hard as the coastal states will. But again, um, 
this this particular vi- uh, virus, it's 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 easy to catch and and it's it's really easy to treat yourself. It's like a light flu for most people. People that are the big trouble are the people who are a lot older. People that have l- lung diseases like your mom. So try to try to keep away from from her with. Uh, people coming over to visit make sure your hands are clean make sure you're clean keeping your house clean plenty of rest plenty of good food plenty of fluids that's how that's what you do and the rest is all up into god's hands that's all Marie that's all says say. that they're in washington state yeah sorry yeah. Marie. I, th- that advice that i'm giving you is is the advice that you're going to want to use in any state that you're in whether you're getting hit hard or whether you're not try to stay out of large groups wash your hands Eat healthy, get plenty of rest, and keep your place clean. That's that's what you got to do. That's all you can do. Yeah, be Earl. Um... If you start to feel like you're having the symptoms that that they're saying, especially if you're middle aged, uh, don't run straight to the emergency room. You're gonna get everybody in the whole hospital sick. You're gonna treat it just like a flu. Plenty of fluids. Get rest. After about six or seven days, they said is the is the time when it should start to dissipate. If it's getting worse at that point, you're starting to have increased difficulty breathing, that's when it's time to start calling your primary care physician, seeing if it's necessary for you to go into an emergency room. Find out if they have one that's designated for you to go to so that you're not spreading this around from hospital to hospital when you have the early onset and it might just pass right over you. I was watching a press conference this morning and uh, with President Trump, and I don't know if all of you caught that, but... They said they're creating a test kit at home. So it might be something along the lines where we go to the pharmacy and get it or or what have you, or they mail it to you. I'm not sure, but they're trying to get it to where people stay home and they can test themselves there. And I guess from what I understand, what they were saying is the test that they give in the hospital is pretty uh, pretty hard because um, they take the swab and go all the way up into your nasal cavity. He says the one they're creating isn't isn't so bad. So hopefully, well, whether whether or not they can they can come up with that kind of test, have it tested by the FDA and get it out in time for when all this is uh, in full bloom, is is still left to be said. Again, uh, there's nothing to panic about. It's not quite as bad as, as full-blown flu. Um, just make sure you follow those things I was saying. Wash your hands, plenty of rest, uh, plenty of fluids, eat healthy, try to stay away from the alcohol and cigarettes if you can. Try to stay away from big groups. I know um, B. Earl said that her husband works in um, apartment maintenance. And he goes into different apartments all day, so he's in contact with a lot of different people. Wash your hands before you walk in. Yeah, and wash your hands before shower. you walk out. She makes some shower, and then Brenda said, um, she has her mom wear a mask and gloves, and she sprays herself with Lysol, and she washes her hands all the time. Okay, unless you're specifically talking about the N95 respirator, the little masks that you get, surgery masks, are not designed. To protect the person wearing them they are designed to protect the people around the person that's wearing them when you cough all of the particles go right into the mask right in front of your face there's all kinds of holes all over it all around it's not designed to protect you from anybody who's around um, you. it's designed to protect the other people diane phillips came in hi welcome diane we appreciate you coming into our show tonight um and then so, um, D asked a question. She wanted to know, is wearing gloves beneficial? Yes. Um, so uh, the latex gloves are great if you have those. Um, the one thing that you want to be careful of is you don't want to put on one pair of latex gloves and then wear them all day long when you're walking around. When you have your hands inside those gloves, it gets warm. Your hands start to sweat. Now you're going to have a warm, moist environment that's really close to any kind of dirt and bacteria on the outside. When you go to pull them off, you're going to get that all over your hands. So if you're going to wear latex type gloves, make sure that you put them on, do whatever you're going to do, take them off and wash your hands. Leaving a pair of gloves on all day long isn't going to help you. It's not going to hurt you. What would be be like an appropriate time for someone to wear the gloves? Like 
what, go in the store? Or? I mean, I work in a hospital. We have to wear the gloves. Uh, you can put on gloves to walk around the store if you want to. Um, I, you know, what we've been doing lately is we've been ordering our food from Amazon Prime. And um, Amazon Prime delivers the food. I don't have to touch anybody. I don't have to go inside anywhere. They deliver all the food right outside. And then I can take whatever precautions that I feel are necessary as I bring the food from outside into my home instead of being out in the grocery store with all those people. You hear them coughing and sneezing and all that. At this time, the disease is not airborne. It is droplet precautions, which means you don't want to come into direct contact with the person, with the surface that they're on, and you don't want to get like them coughing in your face and getting That's the those problem, though, on. is you don't know if someone has it or not, and so it's it's kind of scary if you think about it because you could go to a, I don't know, work or the grocery store and um, get face to face with somebody and... Just like you can when you get the flu. I know. It's 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 no different than, than what you would want to do to protect yourself with, with the influenza uh, virus. <clears throat> Brenda says TBH, I think she already had it at the end of last month and again beginning of this month. The corona, the coronavirus. Um, TBH. What is TBH? To be honest. To oh, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> We're out oh of my loop. god! I know. I'm out. I I don't know. Um. So you think, Brenda? You think your mom had the virus? Is that what you're saying? <clears throat> well, the cool thing about our bodies is, if you catch if you catch a, a, a disease. Your body forms antibodies, it fights it off. You typically don't get that same disease over again unless you never. She said it was okay. She's laughing. Uh, unless unless uh, you never completely uh, fought off the disease. So it's not it's not real, real likely that somebody would catch a disease and then after a long period of time, then get the exact same strain of disease again. Well, from what what's, I understand, what's more likely, like a, a what's view, more. Right? Uh, well, yeah, you form antibodies. It's very, it's very hard to to catch the same. You can't. It's not. It's not possible. Um, now, uh, what what's more likely is she has some strain of the flu, and then it went away, and then maybe she caught a cold or something like yeah. that. Um, they're really specific about the the kinds of symptoms that you're going to get uh, and the differences between the flu and and the uh, coronavirus if you do a simple google search they have all different kinds of things that you can look at and exactly what to do uh, obviously you don't want to look at hank's uh, home remedy for coronavirus or anything crazy like that but there is a lot of great resources out there um, but the absolute front line I, I can't say it enough wash your hands eat plenty of good Healthy food, get plenty of rest. Drink lots of soda. Stay hydrated. All right, I'm done. <laughs> okay. I'm so, kidding. Any other, any I other was questions? I'm kidding. Stop. Look, I got in trouble now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do the drawing. And if um, the person's not here, we'll keep drawing until we find somebody. All right? Okay. Do you get to go? No, I didn't, oh, you didn't want mention it. Oh, my God. All right. Wait. <laughs> Stop it. All right. Let's see. Duh. Who's the music? It's Danny May. Are you still here, Danny May? You have to count of five. <laughs> One. Two. Three, four, five. Out. She's out. Sorry, Danny May. See what happens? Oh wait, Brenda says she wants to. She wants you to talk some more about it. Who? Brenda. Talk about what? Um. Hold on. So Brenda says, I have really bad allergies, and sometimes I think I have this C19. Uh, excellent, excellent statement. I have really bad allergies, especially this time of year. <clears throat> In Arizona, there's a, a lot of rain and then a lot of sunny days right after. So we, we get a, just this incredible amount of greenish that grows up just about overnight. I get hit really, really hard. 
Um, I would suggest that you look into your Zyrtec or your Claritin or uh, your Allegra, whichever one of those three works best for you. Make sure you try all three, see which one works best for you. They all work great um, for different people, just depending upon exactly what works for you. Any of the ones like Benadryl, those ones they have, uh, they'll make you really drowsy, so it's kind of hard to function with those. Now, if your symptoms um, dissipate with any of those three uh, allergy medicines, then you, you can fairly be certain that you just have an allergy attack. Um, that's not been shown anywhere in any test that allergy medicine has been a relief to either the influenza or any of the uh, coronaviruses. So treat, treat the symptoms. Did that answer your question, Brenda? He's, he's really good. He knows me. He's a respiratory therapist and they're the ones that are hands on that are dealing with blow your nose. If your nose is runny, do not sniff, blow your nose. It's simple. Nobody wants to hear you snorkel, anyways. I mean, let, let, let for for let's let's just look at it on the on the on the straight up polite thing. Oh if your nose God. is running, blow it. Nobody get all the stuff out there. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna walk around, if you do get any kind of uh, infection in your nose and it's running, the reason your nose is running is because there's goop in there. Your body's trying to flood yourself with white blood cells, whether it's eosinophils for for being uh, allergies or whether it's the other kind because you've got some kind of infection, your body is throwing all these white blood cells there and it's running. So you don't want to sniff that and have all those particles go down into your lungs. Your lungs are warm, moist, oxygen rich, and dark. It's easy to get infection in there. So blow your nose. Oh, you're welcome, B. You're welcome. Um, Marie says, laugh my blank off. Um, thank you. I hate that sound. Snorkel. <laughs> don't like the snorkel sound. All right. Does anybody else have any questions for Jason before we go, before we pull the winner and go? Now, um, I just want to make absolutely clear to, uh, Brenda, are you sure you want to make that statement? I am a respiratory therapist. I do work in a hospital. However, I am not a physician. So, um, I mean, this is all, these are all suggestions for what you can do to prevent this uh, disease, which isn't anything different than anybody else has really been saying out there. And this is all uh, stuff that, you know, I've found in my own personal experience. I'm in no way giving anybody any medical advice to treat any particular disease that you may be dealing with right now. Um, but these are things that you can do to try and help out. Okay. It's still my informed good it's still very good information. So everybody's gotta be cool to each other out there. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brenda. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like <laughs> So okay, so I'm gonna put in um well here, let's try it. let's try doing another drawing okay. for the okay. Let's see if they're here. Oh, Deppy, Deppy, are you still here, Deppy? Deppy Shitbrick? <laughs> Shepherd. Shepherd. Dude, Hi, I'm Ronnie sorry. G. Welcome. I can't read her writing. Isn't he? Stop. <laughs> One. We're counting. Two, three, four, five. No answer from Deppy Shepherd. No. Hi, Ronnie G. We're doing good. Thank you. You missed trivia. We're just getting ready to close up. And then we got on the infamous top topic of the virus going around because Jason works. Uh, he's a respiratory therapist and he works in the hospital. So um, a few people were asking him questions about that, what they should do and that kind of thing. Okay, here you go. Danny Bay Danny again! Bay. I can't believe it! Here, give me another one. <laughs> I gotta go to bed. The universe wants her to win, but she's not here. I don't know what to say. Lou Rawls. Oh, it was Love Duana. Love Duana, are you still here? One, two, three. I think there's a delay, honey. Four, five, but no one's tight. No one's. They're not here. They're not here. Okay, keep going. We're bound to pick a winner, guys. 
B Earl. B Earl. You're still here, right? I think I saw her type a minute ago. Let's see if she shows up. Let's see. B Earl, are you still here? Yay, B Earl, you're tonight's winner. Congratulations. Hold on, hon. I'm going to show you the prizes again. And then I need you to email me. I'm putting in my email address. I think whoever called these Benoit balls should have won. Oh, D. <laughs> I think it was D. That's what I thought they were. And you got to make them wiggle around in your hand like that yeah. without them hitting each those other. Those are stress balls, aren't they? You could offer a couple of those as surprises. Okay, I'll I see. Cool I don't know how, but they're heavy, aren't they? Let me see how heavy. That's that's kind of heavy. I don't know. All right, so B Earl, are you? You mail these to somebody, and you're they're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> B Earl, <laughs> are you in the United States? Let's see what she says. <laughs> but you won! Congratulations! You do win things. So. Let me know if you're in the United States. If you are, um, oh, she's in Kansas. Okay, so let me see. So you have a choice here. Somebody without with with uh, every, all everything that's going on. I'm going to go to bed. I have to get up four o'clock in the morning. Another shift at the uh, hospital. I hope everybody has okay. a great night and um, stay safe out there and be cool to each other. That's the best advice I can give you. <laughs> Marie. They never listen. I'm just kidding. Okay, so B Earl, hopefully you can see these. These are brand new DVDs. So you have a choice of Battle Los Angeles, Chicken Run, Chicken Run, The Devil Wears Prada, one of my favorites, um, The Bounty Hunter, Hot Shots. And then there was a, some pins. I don't know if you got to see these. So one of them is a pin with a little doggy and it has a halo and wings. And then there's like a, just like an ornament. It's a Mario. And on the back it says a trademark 2018 Nintendo. And then I have a pin from the 2007 Bangkok, um, it's the World Transplant Games. And then, or you can have, how many can she have? Two? Yeah. Two, two pinballs. So, they're actually, they're kind of heavy. This might, I might not be only to be able to ship one. They'd be good in a bar fight. They'd be good. <laughs> Tim says they'd be good in a bar fight. I'm just kidding. I don't know. They're pretty heavy. We'll do two. We'll do two. I'll see how much they weigh. I'm trying to stay within first class. So tell me which one you would like. And then um, you can email it to me. You don't have to say it in chat if you want. Just email it to me. And then email me your address. Make sure you put that in there because I know past winners, sometimes they forget to put their address. So um, please put your address, and then I'll get that shipped out to you right away. Um, let's see. <coughs> Let the man go to bed. <laughs> well, maybe I will have to see what my boys want. Probably the chicken run, right? Jason laughed at me when I had that in as a prize. He's like, nobody, I'm like, you know, somebody might have a kid that wants to see this. Um, it's brand new. It's never been, never been opened. I'm, I'm excited for you too. I'm very happy that you won. So I'm getting ready to sign off once again. Thank you so much for everybody joining us this evening. Um, thanks. Thank you, Ronnie, for coming in. Um, for those of you that are new this week, we do this every Wednesday night. Typically we start at 6 30 PM mountain standard time. Uh, Arizona, we, we're the only state in the United States that does not change time. So we don't follow any, any other time. So make sure you just make sure you check and see what time we are.
compared to what you are, what state you're in or country or wherever you are. So 6.30 typically, tonight we started at 7, but I always put up a thumbnail ahead of time saying what time we're going to be on. So once again, thank you so much. You guys, please stay safe out there and take care of yourselves. Um, thank you so much. Good night.